So I don't want to get my hopes up, but the, uh, the underlying mission for this flight is to hopefully land on top of that smaller mountain in the background. The other day my buddy Shane, that I was flying with in the last video, he sent me this pin I just showed up. It's a marvelous place, we're on the west side of Utah Lake. So uh, it's kind of late in the morning, like 8 a.m., sunrise was 6 a.m., but We'll just keep an eye on the conditions, make sure it doesn't blow up too much like yesterday ended up doing. Yeah, as long as the weather stays tight and there's a nice spot on top of that mountain, my goal is to just explore this area because it looks really sweet and then see about landing up there. Right, Jess? We are recording. Check out this pile of shotgun shells. I expect a little bit longer run on this launch just because of the altitude, less power, less lift, but we have a light headwind, so that should help. All right, one thing left to do, let's get her up. Ew. Nice and easy. Buzz the van mobile. <laughs> so this ridge to the left is the one I'm talking about. I forget what it's called, Mountain Lake or something. I think it reaches up to like 7,000 something feet. And right now the wind is kind of out of the, the east. So I think it's a good direction to check out this ridge. I always like to turn around just to get a visual on where I'm parked from a distance. It seems easy enough to navigate out here. It shouldn't be an issue. Now I'm pretty sure that prominent peak over there is Mount Nebo. I could be wrong, but if I'm right, that's where we flew yesterday. You should check out that video if you missed it. It was pretty sick. Give this little peak a buzz. See, that would be a nice little area to land. Not many snag hazards, not many rocks. But I want to see if there's a place like that all the way up top. Yeah, I think this is going to work. I'm pretty sure straight ahead is the highest peak. It's hard to tell until you're like there, but the conditions are still real mellow. Nothing crazy. I think we're gonna do it, but here's the, the risk why I wanna be like hesitant about it, is if I land up here and say the winds pick up like gnarly or something, or I slip and break my propeller, I'm gonna have a miserable hike down this mountain or send someone with like a off-road vehicle to rescue me. So I just want to be careful. For this type of flying, I really wish I had a bigger wing. This is the 16 free ride that I always fly close to sea level. And it's great for that, but this sort of mountain flying, it would be nice to have something bigger like an 18 or a 20 or something in that range. It's just a completely different style of flying. I talked about it a lot in Iceland. The adventure flying is like more about strategy and technique, I guess, than like throwing acro or hooking slalom turns. It's just a different mentality. All 
All right, here we are approaching the peak. Now it looks like there's several places that are like peaks and all these have antennas on them. I'm gonna fly around a little bit and see, like I just gotta pick the best flat, not rocky, not line snag hazard area, which might be right to my left here. That looks pretty decent. It's not really set up very good for what the wind direction would be. Bunch of big old antenna things up there. Not really good spot to land. This place right here is an option. There's a nice field and an off-road type of road. If you follow this little uh, crease green thing here, there's a car wedged down there. I don't even see a road that it, I mean, maybe way up there, but somehow they made their way all the way down there and crashed. So I'm starting to feel a little bit more action going on, which makes me a little uneasy. I think this place or that place over there is probably my best bet, but I really want to make sure that the wind is uh, from the right direction because I really can't tell that much right now. I don't want to get in a situation where I land and all of a sudden I'm stuck. Let's go check out this peak up here. Yeah, things are heating up. Makes it a lot more difficult. Some sort of deer elk down here. Let's check this little peak here. I'm going to do a flyby. See if I can judge the wind. are getting funky. <laughs> yeah, I'm not finding any landing sites that look like really promising. All of them are either crosswind or really, really rocky. This might just be one of those videos where I make the safe call and uh, not break my ankle on the top of a mountain and get stranded. I mean, that would make for an interesting video, but I don't think it would be very good for my well-being. Yeah, there's actually starting to be lift on this ridge. I guess I would put it this way. I would do it if I absolutely had to, but I definitely don't have to. And the reward for doing it in sketchy conditions isn't high enough. If you put a million dollars up there, I'd do it in a heartbeat, but it just doesn't make sense at this point. dude. <laughs> it's getting lifty out here. The sun's starting to get hot. It's heating up everything. The wind's starting to pick up and blow up this ridge. I think I'm just a little late to the party. If you guys watched yesterday's video, we were actually planning on going uh, paragliding. And then that idea fell through and this was kind of the backup. 
So I started on the other side of the lake and drove all the way around. So got a late start. Yeah, this is where I would like to have a bigger wing. <laughs> Flying over this train and just scoping out like a landing with those little rocks down there, the ankle breakers. This wing feels a little spicy for that sort of thing. If I had to do it, I could. Or if I really wanted to prove something, I would. But I don't have to prove anything. I just fly for the sheer pleasure I'm sure there's people that would do crazy things just to prove that they're the best or whatever. I don't have any pride in proving I'm the best. I just fly for the enjoyment. So if it feels sketchy to me, then there's no point in doing it. I have visual on the van mobile. I kind of feel like I want to just climb up kind of high and get a nice panorama. Oh, Jesus. Airplane on level, crossing over to my left. All right, we're at about eight and a half thousand feet. I just checked my GPS just over this peak. Gonna kill the motor. Got Utah Lake up that way. There's Salt Lake City. The air over here is still nice and smooth. Kind of a bummer that the whole top landing thing didn't work out, but that's the beauty of paramotoring. Sometimes it doesn't work out and I get to share everything with you guys, even if it doesn't work out. Up and over. Up and over. Up and over. Did you know seagulls are the state bird of Utah? We have a lot of seagulls on the Jersey Shore. I would have never thought a place as majestic as Utah would claim the seagull as their state bird. Doing a little sink action. Doing a little turn action. Hoping I didn't mess up and set up downwind. Avoiding boulders. Oh yeah, still cruising. <laughs> I think we were actually crosswind. Yeah, that was pretty much crosswind. Floated a little farther than I figured. Alright, so we're just about packed up here. The bugs out here are crazy, but it's actually nice to kind of get away from the town and city a little bit. I've been there for the past couple days and in populated regions, and it's just nice and quiet, serene out here, so I'm just taking my time, chilling a little bit. But the plan from here on out is I'm probably going to spend some time in a Starbucks or something editing and uploading stuff tonight. If it's not flyable, I'm probably going to head right up to Twin Falls and you guys know that means base jumping. I'll probably be there for about five days, and it's not just gonna be base jumping. I would never got the opportunity to fly the bridge there, so that's definitely gonna be a mission for one of those five days. Fly under the bridge, check out the giant waterfall and everything. So status update, um, I'm just leaving my buddy Shane's house. We decided to film a video which um, I'm making a separate thing. So the next video I post will be this one. It's kind of a off, it's not like a vlog video. 
I'll give you a spoiler. So the concept is a lot of people always ask, like, how do I get into paramotors without spending eight to twelve thousand dollars for brand new equipment? It's a really difficult. It's a difficult question to answer, and we kind of touched on all the topics you would want to consider when buying used gear um, for a cheaper price. And we actually have an example of a three thousand dollar paramotor. And hopefully tonight we're gonna go fly it. So I'm headed to a Starbucks right now to do a little editing. As long as the weather holds together for tonight, we'll test fly that motor. That'll be part of the video for the, the next one. I probably look like a lunatic right now. <laughs> I'm not this crazy. That's an unfriendly sky. All right. Turns out we got weathered out yet again. Freaking thunderstorms brewed up and it got crazy. Um, but yeah, I am exhausted. It's 2 a.m. I just drove three and a half hours north to Twin Falls. We're in a Walmart parking lot. The plan for tomorrow is to secure a base rig. But yeah, I'm really shot and I'm about to fall asleep. So I'm gonna keep this short. I hope you guys enjoyed the adventure this morning how not to land on a mountain. Hope you guys enjoyed. See you in the next one. Peace out.